Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I want to welcome you back to another edition of Your Adrenal Fix. I want to continue talking about mitochondrial dysfunction and glucose dysregulation and adrenal gland stimulation. Uh, I know I've been mentioning to a lot of you guys about the benefits of going ketogenic and I definitely want to pre preface that by saying that it's not for everyone and that's for sure. I mean, not not there's no cookie cutter mix for everyone out there. So you have to take in your, cons your, your specific considerations, whether or not you have insulin resistance, whether or not you have non-alcoholic fatty liver, whether or not you've had your gallbladder removed. Um, how 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 sta static your bile flow is, how congested your liver is, um, how bad your glucose levels and insulin resistance is. There's so many ins and outs and what have you that you can't really give a carte blanche statement to say, okay, everyone goes ketogenic. So I apologize if that was what you had interpreted. I, I typically reserve it for those that have tried a lot of different things and are still suffering and, and really their insulin resistance, their A1C is really high and typically they haven't been in a keto adaptive state long enough to say that it's worked for them and they've run into digestive issues with breaking down fatty acids. So, so I want to talk to you today about certain pitfalls that you should look for. So a lot of patients will say that they have gut irritations or stomach problems or fatty acids in like an oily fatty stool and what I would tell you is probably your liver and your gallbladder is very very congested and it doesn't necessarily mean you can't do it it means that you have to take some extra precautions so bile acids bile salts uh, emulsifiers things that are going to help you absorb these fatty acids a lot better you can google those terms and they have they have ox bile they have um, bile acids, they have some digestive enzymes that will be helpful for fatty acids. Those are what I would suggest for sure because that's going to help you break down the fatty acids better. Another pitfall that I find is patients tend to eat too much protein. And so yes, if you go ketogenic, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going paleo. And so paleo is when we keep our protein levels really high and typically our carb levels low and our fat levels moderate. And it should be flip-flopped with keeping your fat levels really high and your protein levels moderate. When you take too much protein, what's happening is you are becoming a glucose burner once again. And that's the whole reason you're limiting your glucose because you don't want to use your glucose as a fuel source. You want to use your stored fat, aka your ketone bodies, as your fuel source. But if you're eating too much protein, um, how much is too much? It's different for everyone. Some patients don't require too much protein for them to get into a, um, a glucose burning state. So um, the best way to measure is with ketone strips in the beginning. Those are urine strips. But after you've been doing it for a while, you're not going to spill over ketones into the urine. And you may need to do either a, um, a ketogenic um, glucose meter and that has ketone strips. And you're going to be measuring your beta hydroxybutyrate levels. Or you can do a breath test with a ketonics meter. Um, I have one of those. I'll show you about that a little later. And that measures your acetone levels, which correlates very nicely with your ketone body. So basically what I wanted to do is I wanted to tell you that I understand that it's not for everyone. A way to really go and transition into keto ketosis or dietary ketosis is to become more paleo. So really, really start with restricting your carbs. If you can restrict your carbs to less than 75 grams a day, then that's a start. If you can restrict it to less than 50 grams per day, then that's awesome. Then what you want to do is you want to get a nice healthy representation of protein and fat so that you're getting enough quality calories to be able to sustain your energy levels. If you are having sugar cravings, then you're probably either eating not enough fat or too much protein and, and carbs. Um, a lot of times we'll have a, di um, a dietary ketotic headache or flu and that's because you're becoming dehydrated with your um, sustaining of carbohydrates and and you're losing sodium and that's giving you some reflexive headaches so I tell patients to do a bouillon cube or do some electrolytes or some sodium or pink salt or Himalayan salt and that should really help uh, reintroduce um, sodium and, and electrolytes into your body so I know I rifled through that I gave you a lot of information but I think it's worth the the effort to to really control your 
glucose, get your A1C levels down, become a fat burner, and really help repair your mitochondria. And at the end of the day, that's what you want to do to get your energy levels back. So hope you enjoyed another edition of your Adrenal Fix. Uh, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. If you like what you heard, just give me a thumbs up, a share, or a comment. And be sure to check out my blog at adrenalfatiguesociety.com. And I'm looking forward to helping you recover with your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank you so much.